Calculus was not made to be easy, it already is. Hey, BBQ Rambler from StandingReload.com here. This is the first of what I hope are many videos on the enigma that is hit factor scoring. This first set of videos is about what is hit factor scoring, how is it calculated, and some of the nuances behind how the numbers affect your score and ultimately your match finish. So the point is to look at the math behind hit factor scoring. Because the only thing more fun than shooting guns is math. What's up, my nerds? <laughs> so some of what I talk about today will be pretty basic in this video. So if you already know the basics or if you're kind of a... <laughs> watch out for this. Nerd alert! And you'll see this symbol pop up on your screen. That is the sign that it's time to get into the weeds. This video's nerd alerts are at... And if you're more of a... Watch this countdown for how long it'll be until bullets start flying. Future topics will be more in depth, including So if any of those look interesting, go ahead and subscribe to Standing Reload on these platforms or follow me on Instagram for announcements on when new videos come out. A couple of housekeeping items. I'm gonna move fast in certain parts, so feel free to pause the video and take a look at the equations or anything on the screen. And this is my first video. I'm still working out the audio, so I apologize for that being all over the place. Here are the topics in this series. Today we'll talk about the intro to practical shooting and how to calculate hit factor. USPSA and IPSC are governing bodies for practical shooting sports, which basically are pistol, rifle, and shotgun competitions where you walk or run through a stage shooting steel and paper targets. The point is to try to be as accurate as possible while being as fast as possible. You're trying to be like Keanu Reeves in the John Wick movies or the Matrix movies. I mean, really, you should just try to be like Keanu Reeves in all facets of your life. What do you think happens when we die, Keanu Reeves? <laughs> I know that the ones who love us will miss us. IPSC stands for International Practical Shooting Confederation, and it is an international sanctioning body for practical shooting sports. USPSA is United States Practical Shooting Association, and it's the American branch of IPSC. So USPSA and IPSC have slightly different rules, but overall they're very similar. And even though these targets look different, the scoring system is the same. Okay, so here you have an IPSC target. Here you have a USPSA target. Both targets you'll see are brown on one side, white on the other. Brown here, white here. If the target's facing you this way and it's brown, you shoot it. Two shots. If it's white, you don't shoot it. So you might have a situation something like this, where you have to just shoot in the brown, not the white. So you'll notice that these targets have these perforations. Little cuts in the cardboard separating different scoring zones. On the USPSA target, you have A or Alpha here, and you have another Alpha zone up here. Then you have Charlie here, Delta around the outside. With the IPSC target, there's just one A zone. You have Charlie, and here is Delta. Sometimes you'll have targets that look kind of like this, where part of it is painted black in different configurations. This is not a real target. This is just a dry fire practice target. But if you shoot into the black, that's just like shooting a miss. And sometimes you'll have all three. 
And you might also have steel. It might look something like this. These are not the real steel. This is just dry fire practice. But it'll look like this. You have a popper, mini popper. Could be shaped like a circle. Could be a hexagon, a square. Whatever shape it is, you need to hit it and knock it down. Match typically has six or more stages that you run through. Here's an example of a stage diagram from my club, Linea de Fuego in Southern California. They put out these diagrams and 3D walkthroughs before every match. And this is what that stage looked like on the ground. The range officer or RO follows you through the stage to make sure you're being safe and times your run using a special timer that registers the sound of each gunshot and records the time. Once the stage is complete, the range officer will go through and look at each target and score them based on how well you shot. Two alpha. Alpha Charlie. Once the scorekeeper has added up how many shots you got in each zone, they will calculate the number of what I call target points. So the closer you shoot to the center, the more target points you get. And target points is my thing. Uh, there are a lot of things in USPSA and IPSC that are called points. So just to make it clear for the video, I'm calling the points you get from shooting the target, that's target points. So they'll count up how many target points you got on every target throughout the stage. The scorekeeper will then take the number of target points you scored on the stage divided by the number of seconds it took you to shoot them to get your hit factor. Now this is where it really gets interesting. You want your hit factor to be as high as possible so there's two ways to do that. You can increase your target points or you can decrease your time or number of seconds. So let's look at an example. So let's say you had a stage where you scored 90 target points and it took you 9 seconds. Your hit factor would be 10 points per second. And on that same stage, if you had scored 100 points instead of 90, the hit factor goes up from 10 to 11.11. Or if instead of increasing your points, you decreased your time from 9 seconds to 8 seconds, the hit factor goes up from 10 to 11.25. So hit factor is a balance between accuracy and speed, and there's the rub right there. If you try to be more accurate, people tend to slow down. If you speed up, people tend to have wild shots or get a lot of misses. So that is the balance, the fine line you're trying to strike. So let's dig into the parts now, starting with accuracy. We'll start with steel because that's easy. Regardless of its size, shape, or color, knocking over steel is five points. So here we have the paper targets. The one on the left is the USPSA or metric target, and on the right is the IPSC or classic target. And yes, it is weird that the American target is called metric when we're the only ones in the world who don't use a metric system, even though it's far better. But moving on. You take two shots on each paper target. The highest scoring zone is alpha. If you hit the alpha, that's five points. If both your shots hit the alpha, that's five plus five is 10 points. I'm gonna skip over Charlie and Delta for a second and move on to a miss. If you get a miss, you get zero points, and then you also get a 10 point penalty for a total of minus 10. For Charlie's and Delta's, your score depends on your power factor. So now we gotta dig into power factor. Power factor can be either minor or major. If you're shooting minor power factor, then you get less points for Charlie's and Delta's. And if you're shooting major power factor, you get more points. And the basic difference is the size of the bullet that you're shooting. 
here are the most popular calibers in USPSA. You got 9mm, 38 Super, 40, and 45. So the three on the left are either bigger bullets or more powder, so they create more recoil than the 9mm does on the right. So if you're shooting 9mm, you're going to be at a minor power factor, which means you'll get minor scoring. So here's minor scoring. This guy is shooting a 9mm 135 grain bullet out of a 1911, which is a big heavy gun. If you're shooting any of these other three, then you're shooting major power factor and you'll get major scoring. Here's the same guy shooting major 45 ACP 230 grain bullet out of another 1911. The reason that there are two scoring systems is if you're shooting a larger bullet with more recoil, it's harder to get accurate second shots at speed. So to compensate for that, you get more points. Looking at them side to side, it's hard to tell that the miner on the left has less recoil because this is a heavy gun and this guy spends half his life in the gym. But if you look at the angle here, you can see that there is a difference. Nerd alert! Power factor is measured as bullet mass times bullet velocity after it leaves the barrel of your gun. And in physics, mass times velocity is momentum. So power factor is measuring the momentum of your bullet, which loosely translates to recoil. And the way that that is actually calculated is grains of the bullet, so the weight of the bullet, the mass of the bullet, I should say, times the velocity in feet per second divided by a thousand. So you figure this out by physically weighing your bullet and then shooting the bullet through a chronograph in the same pistol or rifle that you're shooting the match with. So for major power factor, you have to be above 165, and for minor, you have to be above 125 in USPSA. Now back to scoring. Steel and alphas are the same for minor or major, five points each. Misses are the same at minus 10. A hit on a no-shoot, which is if you hit the white targets, is the same for minor or major. It's minus 10 for each hit, regardless of the scoring zone that you hit. And keep in mind, each hit on a no-shoot is minus 10. So if you shot up these no-shoots like it's shown here, you'd have minus 40 points on a left target and minus 30 points on the right target. It's only Charlies and Deltas on the brown targets that are different. Charlies are three points for minor and four points for major, and Deltas are one point for minor and two points for major. And keep in mind that the minor and major scoring is works for both targets. There's no difference there. And now it is time for a short attention span break. This chart shows how much it costs you if you don't get two alphas per target. So the maximum points per target is 10. If you get two hits in the alpha zone, both minor and major are the maximum of 10 points, which is 100% of available points. In major, an alpha charlie is 9 points, or 90% of total available. So if you shoot an alpha charlie on every target, you're only earning 90% of the points you could have earned, and only 90% of the hit factor you could have earned. So here is the generic hit factor formula. Hit factor is directly proportional to points. So if you average 90% of the points, that means you'll get 90% of the hit factor you could have had if you averaged all alphas. And a 10% decrease in hit factor is pretty significant. In minor, an alpha charlie is 8 points, so it's 80% of available. And a 20% difference in hit factor is very significant. The key is to skate that line of getting good hits without slowing down to get them, as the saying goes. Alpha delta is 60 or 70%. 2 charlie is 60 or 80%. Charlie Delta is 40 or 60%, and 2 Delta is 20 and 40%. And after that, the points go negative, which we will talk more about in a minute. Nerd alert! The difference between minor and major is anywhere between 0 and 20% of the possible points. But if you compare the direct percent increase from minor to major, it's more dramatic. For example, if you average two deltas across a stage shooting major, your hit factor would be twice what it would be if you shot minor. 
So you might wonder why anyone would shoot minor when the points are so much higher in major. Well, let's take a look at the divisions in USPSA. So you have production, carry optics, limited, open, single stack, revolver, and PCC. In production, carry optics, and PCC, you get minor scoring regardless of your power factor, which is why everyone shoots 9mm in those divisions. In revolver, limited, and open, you pretty much have to shoot a major gun to be competitive. The only division where people argue that either option can win, minor or major, is single stack. Because in single stack, major has the points advantage, but a 9mm gun can fit 10 rounds in the magazine instead of 8, which gives you more options and allows you to take more risks. Let's work through an example of how to calculate hit factor on a real stage. This is a simple stage with two steel targets and three paper for a total of 8 rounds. Each steel is worth 5 points for a total of 10, each paper gets two rounds with a maximum point value of five points per round, so maximum of 10 points per paper target. 10 times three is 30 potential target points on paper for a total of 40 possible target points for this entire stage. And don't worry about stage points for right now. I knocked over both steel and got all alphas on paper for a maximum of 40 points and it took me 5.03 seconds. So 40 divided by 5.03 is a 7.9523 hit factor. And you can think of it as shooting 7.9523 points per second. There are three main penalties that have to do with scoring that I want to talk about now. So the first one is a mic or a miss, which you see here. You got one shot in the alpha, let's say. The other shot just totally missed the target. Mics are painful because you get a 10 point penalty, but also you have the opportunity cost of the five point alpha that you could have gotten, but didn't. The chart shows a 20 round stage, 100 total possible points. If instead of an alpha, you get a mic, you've cost yourself 15 points, 100 points. If it's perfect, 85 with that mic. The next scenario is a mic no-shoot. So you got one shot in the alpha, but your next shot went into a no-shoot. So because you don't have a second shot on the brown, that's a mic. You missed the target. But you also get a penalty because you hit a no-shoot. And note on the graphic on your screen that even though technically the bullet that went through the delta zone of the no-shoot did continue through and go through the brown target behind it, because it went through the no-shoot first, you don't get a score for that hit on the brown. It's as if that part of the brown doesn't exist. You get hit with 10-point penalty for the mic, 10-point penalty for the no-shoot, and then you factor in a 5-point opportunity cost for not getting an alpha, and that one shot costs you 25 points. Mic no-shoot is very painful. And then the third one I'll talk about is just a no-shoot penalty. So in this case, you might have taken two shots at the brown. You felt like one of them was a little off and you might have hit a no shoot. So just to be safe, you took a third shot and the third one you got into the brown. So there's no mic, but you did get a no shoot. This illustrates the point that you can make up a mic, but you can't make up a no shoot. Once you put a hole in that white target, that hole is there and there's nothing you can do to take it away. But if you at least make up the mic, then the only thing you've lost is the 10 point penalty for the no shoot. You don't get the 10 point mic penalty and you don't have the five point opportunity cost of not getting an alpha. Now 10 points is a big deal, don't get me wrong, but it's better than 25 points down. Here's another hit factor calculation example. This stage is more complex and it's the same stage from earlier in the video. It has one steel and 14 paper. 14 paper is 140 possible points plus five from the single steel for 145 total possible target points. Pretty good points until the last shot, which was the dreaded Mike No Shoot. As a 
clamshell closed, the last bullet went through the nose chute before it went through the brown target that was behind it, so you don't get points for that hit on brown. That one shot cost me 20 points, and I didn't get any points for the shot itself, so in theory, it cost me 25 points. 112 points divided by 20.75 seconds is a 5.3976 hit factor. Let's look at how much that one shot hurt to score. So let's say instead of that Mike no shoot that I had shot, a Charlie, even not a Alpha, but just a Charlie, my points would have gone up from 112 to 135. The hit factor increases from about 5.4 to 6.5, which is a 21% increase and a full hit factor from one shot. In the video, you can see that after taking that last shot, I kind of stand there and think about it for a second. And basically, I thought that maybe my last shot went into the no shoot, but I wasn't sure. And I was trying to decide if I should go ahead and take another shot into the head box here, even though that would increase my time, or if I should just leave it and hope that I didn't hit the no shoot. And while I was standing there thinking forever, I decided just to leave it, which turned out to be a mistake. So, learned not to overanalyze, just do it. And let's look at how much that decision cost me. By making up that last shot, the mic goes away. Assuming I hit an alpha, the points would increase by five. So instead of 112, you get 127. To make up that shot would take extra time though. I had to think about it, realize I might have hit the no shoot, decide to take another shot, aim in on a head box, which is a small target to hit. So let's say that it would have taken me 0.75 seconds to get that last, to get an extra shot off. So 127 points divided by 21.5 seconds is 5.9 hit factor, which is a 9.4% improvement and about a half a hit factor higher just from making up that one shot. So hopefully that wasn't too boring. I know some of you are probably feeling a little right now the next video in the series will be a deep dive into hit factor 